Hello and welcome to this video. This is going to be the final video uh, that we're going to look at capacitors and we're going to look at something a little bit more interesting now. So we're saying that um, we've said that a capacitance is a fixed thing. If we have an electrical component it will have a fixed value of the capacitance but then how do we design different things to have different capacitances? So we need to come up with an expression that is going to be able to explain what physical things can we do to the capacitor to actually change the capacitance. How can we design something to have a different capacitance? And that equation is also on your equation sheet. And we can also say that the capacitance can be um, written as uh, C is equal to A epsilon naught epsilon R over D. Okay, where if I imagine these uh, plates as being um, square parallel plates or rectangular parallel plates I'm gonna go with square for now I will have a plate here with a cross-sectional area of A and I will have a plate adjacent to it with the same cross-sectional area of A one of them will be positive one of them will be negative they will be a distance of D apart okay so A is the area of the plates and D is the distance between the plates and they each have uh, their expected um, units area meters squared uh, distance is just meters we've also got this epsilon naught so this is the epsilon naught we know is the permittivity of free space this is how well um, permittivity of free space so this is how well uh, free space so air holds charge but we now have introduced this epsilon r now this epsilon r is actually now going to be called the relative perm permittivity okay and this is because one way that we can change um, the capacitance is to put a different sort of material that's not air in between these plates okay so in order to increase capacitance we ideally want a is going to be directly proportional to c so that means we want a large area on the plates so a large area and that makes sense because that means if we have a larger area for the plates um, it means that we have more positions for the electrons to be held in. Uh, the second thing is we want a small uh, distance D between the two plates. We want to ideally get them as close together as possible um, and that's going to cause a much stronger electric field uh, which will lead to um, more charge being able to store in this electric field. Or we change epsilon R and the way we do that is with a certain type of materials which we call dielectrics okay so in this video we're going to look at the um, theory behind dielectrics why they work and why do they actually increase the capacitance so um, the dielectric will have some sort of value of the permittivity of that dielectric which is just basically saying how much charge can this thing hold okay in order for a dielectric to hold charge, dielectrics as a material have to be something called polar. They have to be a polar material. Now, what I mean by polar, anyone who's doing uh, A-level chemistry will always be able to tell that a polar molecule is something where we have a partial charge. So instead of having a full positive charge on a molecule or a full negative charge on a molecule, we can end up with an area that's slightly more positively charged than another area. For example, water or H2O has this kind of shape where it has lone pairs of electrons. It has uh, two um, uh, paired electrons at the top here. And these are just protons because the electrons are held in these covalent bonds which means that this down here is just a proton area. So this is going to be a positive uh, area up here. And this is just electrons around this. So this is just going to be a negative area up here. So I end up with a polar molecule. 
I end up with something called a dipole. Now, di just meaning um, two pole, meaning poles. So I end up with two poles, a positive and a negative. So this ends up as a polar uh, material. Now, how does this then work when I put it between two plates? Well, this by itself will have its own electric field. If I just imagine having a negative charge at the top, so this is like a negatively charged area, and then I have a positively charged area underneath, I end up with a uniform electric field between these two um, areas. So this molecule itself has its own electric field. Now, if I place this electric field into an external electric field, which is caused by these capacitor plates, it actually will align uh, with the electric field uh, in the opposite direction. Because if I have, um, if I scroll down a little bit, if I had a positive area here, so this is positively charged, okay, and then I have a negative side of the plate this side, so this is negatively charged, and I put a molecule in here that has a positive side, so let's, I'm just going to do one um, molecule in the middle, I have a positive side that's going to go towards the negative, and I have a negative side that's going to go here, it's pole inside here is going to, or its electric field is going to travel from positive to negative. So this is going to go this direction, whereas the external electric field is going to go in the opposite direction. So the dielectrics uh, align um, with the field, but just in the opposite direction. In the opposite direction okay so we have um, all of these and obviously there's not just going to be one molecule here there will be a full sheet full of these molecules but that's going to take forever to draw so I'll just draw um, imagine it as being a three molecule wide um, material we end up then um, with more charge being stored between these parallel plates because not only do we have the charge on the plates we now have the charge in between the plates so this then leads to more charge held between the plates and from there we then can say that if we've got more charge as long as the potential doesn't change which we find out it doesn't then the capacitance must increase because C is equal to Q over V so as long as we have more charge, that means we have a higher capacitance. So therefore, uh, since the potential doesn't change, D doesn't, uh, doesn't vary, the capacitance increases as a dielectric is intru introduced. And this is the way that we can then say the three ways that we can increase the capacitance of something are to increase the cross-sectional area of the plates, decrease the distance between them, or change epsilon r by introducing a dielectric. Now epsilon r then means for anything that's not um, including a dielectric, this equation of c is equal to a epsilon naught epsilon r over d we would say if there's no relative permittivity of um, something between them, meaning there's no other substance but free space, then we say that epsilon r is equal to one uh, if no dielectric is present. Okay, so this means dielectrics will affect the amount of charge that can be uh, introduced, they will affect the electric field strength inside a um, inside a pair of parallel plates. So let's write this as a list, actually. So, um, so the dielectrics have no effect on the potential between the plates. No effect on V. They increase uh, the charge held by the plates and they decrease the strength of uh, the electric field because if you remember we have a strong electric field going this way we have a small electric field going this way 
which means the electric fields are going to cancel out to some degree, uh, which is what allows us for this um, increased charge. And so now we've covered everything that we need to know about capacitors. We know um, what they are, what they're used for. We know how uh, to calculate the energy stored. We can calculate um, how uh, quickly they will charge or discharge. And we know things about the time constant. And now we know if we place uh, dielectric materials in between, we can actually also increase the capacitance uh, of any plates. Uh, so this then wraps up electric fields. And thank you for watching.